Welcome to the first episode of Behind the Bar. Today we're at Europa Weightlifting Club in Crayford and we're going to be interviewing Jack Oliver. Jack is a multiple British record holder. He is hoping to become a two-time Olympian, having represented Great Britain at the 2012 Olympics in London. Enjoy. Anyone who's watching this, uh, recognise your name, recognise your face, but maybe don't know who you are. Who is Jack Oliver? <clears throat> Great guy. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so, British weightlifter, yes. um, currently ranked number one, 77 class. Uh, been lifting a long time, it was 10 years. I learned to lift in Europa Gym, so this is a new Europa Gym after yeah. they moved in 2012. Um, and so, yeah, I've been lifting a long time, been to Commonwealth Games, Olympic Games, and every other competition, really. And Just the right legend, then, yeah? Yeah, something like that. Yes, it has been that. Right, um, so I heard that you uh, started off with gymnastics uh, before you were sent off to try weightlifting. How old were you at the time? Yeah, this is one of those stories that's in like newspapers and stuff, which is kind of not really true. It's, Go ahead, um, tell us a true story. So like, it's called a gymnastics. I went to a gymnastics gym, so it was a Europa, the old Europa Centre. And um, but I didn't go until I was about 13, I was in year eight. And it was literally me and my mate Pete wanted to learn to do a backflip. So we were like, we found this gym. And we're like, we joined a rec class, signed up for like twice a week. And was like, look, we wanted to learn how to do a back somersault. That's it. Not interested in anything else, any of the other stuff. We just want to do stuff that looks cool. Yeah. And so we did. Like we learned that, we learned wall flips, you know, all that kind of cool stuff. More like, like uh, tricking sort of stuff. And yeah. they just let us play in the gym, basically. Um, so it wasn't like I had a proper gymnastics background. Sweet. Um, it was literally, we went in and was like, let's have a go. Let's learn something cool. And that was obviously how I found the overweight gym. So you met, you met Andy then in the gym and he sort of said, yeah, well, <coughs> the gym wasn't even open, I don't think, at that point. It was a broom cupboard downstairs, and we just rented out. It was still like, um, there was no flooring down. It was just like dirty, dusty floor and a cupboard with a couple of weightlifting platforms slapped on top. And yeah. the first time I went down there was because the gymnastics coach had took, taken us in there and we did some bench after a session. And then um, I went, I left my chalk in there, a little chalk thing, and I went back down there to get my chalk. Um, and I walked in and the weightlifters were in, Andy and his mates, and big bearded men, and I'm a skinny little 40 kilo lad. And I walked in like, and squeaked at them to get my chalk back. And then that was when they asked, told me I'll have a go at it, really. And I thought, yeah, it's pretty good. That's a bit better story than uh, what appears in the papers, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, much, better. it's much better, the truth, isn't it? It's boring in the papers. Yeah, he did gymnastics and it moved on. Yeah, they've cut you short there. Yeah. Um, so when I, was, when I was prepping for this interview, I was obviously did a bit of research on you. Yeah. And, um, I had a look and you've, you currently hold, at last count, 18 British records. I think that might be 17 now, because the young lad beat him. Yeah, 62. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, it was, it was good lift, wasn't it? But I think I did more British records than 10. I think it was 20, so it's probably 19. Because 19 now, cool. That. Um, but I noticed, one thing I noticed was that um, they started, I think, from under 16. So, yeah. was that, did it take you a little while to get into it, or were you not very serious, or did you not really care? Do you, do you know what I mean? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I started when I was... 14. Um, yeah, I think those under 16 records, I wasn't 16 when I set them, I was actually 15 right. when I set them. Sweet. So I was doing those weights from that age, it's just in the record, it doesn't actually kind of like show that sort of thing. Cool. Um, but obviously, because I didn't start until I was 14, it's not like I had you know, those, those little little records over the school years and yeah. I didn't. I didn't even know about these. I didn't even know there were records at the time. It wasn't until years later when they actually started, you know, compiling them yeah. and so on, and I had any idea. Yeah, I was, when I was looking through, I thought oh, that's a bit, that's a bit strange. So, was it to get like a massive growth spurt or something? <laughs> what did you focus on during your early days? Was it more technique based? Was it more strength based? What, what was the sort of focus? Obviously, you were a kid, so you was leaving it. But. Yeah, yeah. So, um, like I'm coaching a young guy. A young kid is 13 years old, so I called Andy up the other day and said to him, like, what do I do with him, basically? And Andy's answer was, nothing heavy. Simple as that. As at that age, it's just like, um, get him in the gym, get him doing the lifting and get him moving with a bar, and you don't need to lift heavy. But we did, like, um, a thing that's, you see, missing these days, people trying to snatch heavy weights and so on, and they got no control over it because they never learned any of the basic exercise first. So we did, like, loads of snatch balance every day. Snatch balance, muscle snap, all of these like silly exercises with a bar or like really light weights just to get used to what it's like holding a bar above your head and overhead squat and everything. 
which I think people just kind of skip out these days because they don't really know about it. But we spent loads of time doing all that before we were lifting heavy weights. So it's like building your own little encyclopedia <coughs> of movement, effectively. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we do all sorts of that, but we did a lot of like, um, like bodybuilding too. You know, like sort of at the end of every single session, and we would make us do like dips, or pull up, stuff like that. Just general sort of body awareness, making yourself a bit. Bit stronger. So, you know. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, what age did you realise that weight lifting <coughs> could actually become a career for you, and something that you could effectively earn money from? About six months ago. <laughs> um, I not the Olympics. I uh, never really. I didn't even think about the Olympics until 2011. I think it was. Um, I. I hurt my back in 2010 and I couldn't lift for about nine months and it got to the point where I was like, I don't even know if I'm ever going to be able to lift again. And yeah. I started training again early 2011 and um, that was when I moved up to Leeds. Tamas was coaching and I literally just started training again. I was lifting tiny weights and he said to us, like, uh, we had a camp up there and got all the guys there that had any sort of chance of going to the Olympics about, I don't know, 10 of us there. And he went round and it was like, so whoever it was first, do you think we could go to the Olympics next year? And I was like, um, well, maybe, you know, if I, if I train hard and this goes well, the next person, we, are you going to go to the Olympics? I was like, I've got a shot. And he got to me and was like, are you going to go to the Olympics? Yeah, well, I'll do it. Fine, done. I was decided. But that was it. That was the day I decided I was going to go to the Olympics when he asked me. And I thought, yeah, all right. Mm. I decided it then. And, it happened, didn't it? You know, if we want to do something to make it happen. Um, but with all I focused on now was training for the Olympics and getting my degree done, obviously. But like, it wasn't until they took away the funding that I was like, right, can I make any money out of doing this um, yeah. and turn it into a business? So that was only really recently that I started doing all that. I want to. Defi- I'll definitely want to talk about funding later. But I just, <coughs> um, Obviously, you started your career down here under Andy, yeah. um, but then you moved to Leeds. Was it because you went to uni that you promised that move, or was there a national training service? A bit of both. So, like, I started uni in Nottingham, um, and I used to drive to either Dangerous Dave Sawyer's gym uh, in Alfreton, or I used to go down and train in Loughborough. I was basically right in the middle of the evening. It was 45 minutes to an hour drive, you're up or down. So, I used to make my sessions up, and Dave coached me a bit there. It was really good. Um, and then, yeah, so British Racing set the whole thing up in Leeds and said, do you want to move there? So I called up Leeds Uni and said, any chance of a transfer? They said, yeah, you can transfer straight into your second year of your degree once you finish your first year in Nottingham. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't lose anything in my degree. In fact, Leeds was probably a better uni anyway. So I was like, cool, move up there, carry on my degree, not lost anything there. And I've got a gym and accommodation for a British way of thing. So it was kind of a... Yeah. The deal was in no, no debate about that one. Were you happy at Leeds? Um, <coughs> obviously, you know what the weightlifting great finds like, you hear all sorts of stories. I know the story you can confirm, but tell this load of crap. I uh, heard stories about like, maxing out three times a week and some sort of jazz like that. It was hard training. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think really. Yeah, we had, sesh- we had periods of training like. I don't know, you can talk about the training that we did all day long there. But like leading up to competitions, so like big big Fridays. Yeah. So I didn't realise that was like an international thing. We all were that big Fridays at Leeds. Yeah. Um, so like say 2011, once I got back into lifting, I had a competition every month pretty much for the second half of the year. So I went to like the Junior Europeans, the Commonwealth Championship, World Championship, so on. Um, and so there was only a month between each one. Every Friday was Big Friday, so go up to max, but then Monday and Wednesday were also basically daily max. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, Monday session. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two sessions a day. Um, Tuesday and Saturday, one session, so it's like eight. And then we did like just assistant sessions as well on the Tuesday and Thursday, so we were 10 sessions a week. Um, so it's a lot of heavy lifting. It was hard work, but like um, <coughs> a lot of people were say bad things about it, but like and complain about it, but then the people who weren't there and have no idea what we did. Because at the end of the day, I went there broken, but my best lifts were 130, 130 snatch and 150, no, yeah, 152 clean and jerk. And then in the six months of training that I did there, I did 140 snatch 
and I had one 65 Tea and Joe. So if six months, ten months, that's 15 on my Tea and Joe. It doesn't matter what people say at the end of the day, it's a massive result. If you did that in a whole year, you've had a good year. Yeah. So you can't complain if you get beaten up, can you? No, it's, it's, good, it's good. Results, results are adults. It's good to hear. So if you're spreading rumours out there, stop it. That's pretty much it, yeah. Happy days. No, that's, that's exactly what I think people. Cut, cut the crap. Yeah. Because you know it's like with the room in the middle going yeah, yeah. clubs. And it's, there's two people who talk a lot about things when they weren't actually there. Like there was some brutal training, there's no debate about that. And we were, we were like, um, if you ever seen School of Champions, Bulgarian training yeah. documentary, and everyone's walking around dead, they're like zombies. It was like that. There was a lot of like pre workouts going on every day, like getting that in you because you were so knackered. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you get that. I can't turn down 10 kilos on the snatch in six months. No, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, so you uh, you were, while you were in Leeds, you went to Olympics um, and you were 21 at the time, is that right? Yeah, yeah. 21. You went 5 for 6, missed yeah. your over at Olympics, yeah. I bet that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the way I bombed them at the British Championships about two months before. Um, I bet that got the winnings up, didn't it? A bit. But um, was, it, was it quite hard after the Olympics, you know, uh, 21 years old, you go to the Olympics, you have effectively competition in your life. Yeah. Was it quite hard? You leave the Olympics, you sort of think, what do you do now? <laughs> or you might go more and get more? Um, well, I left the village early because I had exams to do. So it was just like complete turnaround from that. So yeah. it was, um, I had, I spoke to a uni and they let me split my exams. So I did some in May and I did some with people doing their research in August or September, uh-huh. whatever it was. So I split some so I wouldn't have to do as many of the smaller games. It meant I stayed until the end of the weightlifting. I watched all the uh, A groups. After that, packed some of the stuff while well, there was still like a week and a half of the games to go. Went back to Leeds, started revising my exams that I had to finish off. Um, and I still had another year of my degree because I split my third year part time. So then it, that was my main focus from until the yeah, middle of 2013, basically get my degree done. So there's no real time to sort of mope and feel sorry for yourself? <coughs> no, definitely not. No, fair enough. Um, th- by the way, I forgot to mention at the start, a lot of these questions are stuff that I just want, what do I want to know? And also, yeah. um, you saw the post I put out yesterday, the, a lot of these questions are mixed in from people that are coming yeah, in. Yeah. So, um, this one's definitely from one of my mates, actually. Uh, obviously, how has uh, weightlifting effect at a high level affected your social life? I'm guessing you don't really have one. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, um, to be honest, what do I do? I don't get out much, but I'm not that bothered, really. I enjoy training, I enjoy competing, I enjoy training. So it's like, um, it depends on what you train, but like for us, the gym was always a social thing anyway. Like, it was not like we'd go in, get your training done, and rush back out the door. Europa was like where your friends were anyway. Your friends were the other weightlifters. So, you know, your social was your training, and it's still like that now. Like, sometimes, so like I came in on Sunday because Owen was training. And like, I wasn't really meant to train on Sunday, but I know he had a big session. So I was like, I'll come in, do a lot of assistance, and we'll start a chat with him. And, you know, so just because I'm not going out drinking doesn't mean I've got a social life sort of thing, but a social life is involved with other weightlifters. No, I think, I, I, think that's, I think that's cool. I think sometimes a social life is not just this, like you say, it could be watching Game of Thrones on the sofa. Well, I love Game of Thrones. Did you watch it last night? I don't watch it. You don't watch Game of Thrones? I can't commit, oh. to, I can't commit to it. Sorry, mate. Oh, you need to find lots of it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've got some books as well, I've read all the books. It's a lot of series to commit to. Though. No, it's just me, once you start, that's it. I told someone else. That's why, that's why. That's exactly. do it. Um, so, while you were in Leeds, um, oh, sorry, after the Olympics, you moved up to the 5 kilo category. Were you struggling to stay at 77, or was it more, you thought, I reckon I can get a bit more out? No, I was struggling at 77. Um, and I don't struggle so much anymore, even though I'm stronger. I think, um, where I was competing so much, being on like a constant diet was the issue and then after I went to 85 and then I went back down to 77 and then I don't struggle so much anymore so I think it was just like where I was holding my body weight down all the time metabolism just gets a bit ruined and you end up eating less and less and so on um, but yeah like I, I wasn't big enough to be 85 kilos basically yeah. like I got there at one point and it was just fat and then like it didn't help like I lost a load of weight I went down to 82 and was lifting the same weight as it was when I weighed 85 so it was like well I might as well lose a few more kilos and be 77 kilos again. That's cool, that's cool. Um, this, is the, oh, this is my next question, what prompted the move? Uh, yeah. Just realising you're a bit silly, I'm a bit fat, I guess it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what happened in uh, 2014? You, need, you needed surgery off the Commonwealth, I believe. Yeah. What was that, a knee or something? Yeah, so I tore the cartilage in my knee at the British 2014. 
when I lost Team Jeopardy, I felt like as soon as I pulled the team, just think. So it's one seven two. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like Terrace did all the jokes, and I was like, yeah, that's it. I'm, that's me done. And he just got fatter and fatter, and like I couldn't move it that night. And then obviously after like eight weeks, we come off and I had a scan and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, surgery on it. And I was like, well, I'll have it done in eight weeks then, but I'm not doing the games first. But I, yeah. Well, was, were you uh, living on injections? I just, I just rubbed it a lot, iced it a lot. It, it was, I didn't have anything done. Like there was nothing they could do. Yeah. I think they said, you know, you can have an injection that make it a little bit better, but like it's not going to make a great deal of difference. So you know what? Like just, I just get on with it. But it was bad. I mean, trying to, it hurts so much. Again, it just to bend enough to do a full squat it was just like it could take me forty minutes of just like rocking back and forth on my knee and trying to bend it around to even do a squat. So training wasn't it, that'd be the best for those eight weeks. You still came forth. Yeah, you know, that should have done a lot better than that. Well, it's, it, actually, I just thought of something. You know, I can't remember what weight it was, but um, in the comments, I think it was your second lift where you, as you... Yeah, you, you know was that, what happened then. Was that the... Yeah, I was just I, 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 I haven't got a clue. <laughs> you watch it back and just think, what was I doing? Yeah, pretty much. I just... I, I don't know, I won't watch it. I just... Yeah. Rather. But let's set about it better, really. So, you know. We'll move on then. <laughs> um, so, talk us through. Obviously, I was at the movie this, this year um, yeah. when you absolutely smashed it, to be honest. Um, talk us through uh, the English this, this year's performance, including your rehab from injury. So, hey, after the Commonwealth, you go under the knife, then what happened leading up to the English? Yeah, so I think I started training properly in about November um, once it was able to do a squat again, basically. Um, you quite fat. I was skinny, I think. Like when I don't train, I just lose weight, it just disappear. So um, yeah, I think I started training and then maybe slightly earlier. I was able to do a little bit. It's like even before I got range, I was starting doing muscle snatching and stuff on blocks. So I was getting my arms working, getting as much of me working as I could before my knee would actually let me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it was probably like, at least three months of real training from November, December, and January, a lot. Or basically aim for the English. Um, yeah, and then just adding more sessions in until I was doing the proper training program for the last one, six weeks leading up to it. Um, but I didn't know I was going to lift those weights. I mean, so it wasn't the plan then? No, 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 I'm trying to think what I lifted leading up to it. I had done um, a 130 snatch for your one or two reps, I'm not sure. Started on 35. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I did that into warm-up room, so I was like, well, I've not even done this yet, this year. I've not done this since, like... I, I, think, I think that's a brilliant point. I'm sure you see in warm-up rooms, I've seen it before. You get some lunatic who's opening on 120 kilo snatch, and he's up to, like, 140 in the warm-up room. <laughs> What's this guy doing? Like, the yeah. day before, he's done it as well. Yeah. I think it's quite interesting hearing from someone who... Because I follow you, obviously, on social media, yeah, yeah. I think you don't seem to go that heavy, and it fascinates me, because people always say, you need to go heavy to lift heavy. I'm yeah. like, yeah, do you really? But yeah. it's interesting. It's interesting getting that approach. Um, so on that, then uh, I think a lot of people be interested by the fact that you're self coach now. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you arrive at that decision? And um, how do you avoid? I'm sure what many people get is just absolutely destroying themselves, like ten singles at a max, and you know what I mean. Yeah, that's too much doing that. With my body and my knees and shoulders and bad wrists and everything, it's easy. It's to not heavy weights on the bar plus I train by myself most of the time so it's not like you be there garden by someone so it's just like I just do what I want to do like you should body dictate yeah exactly so. um, it's like um, <coughs> I don't I don't have a set training program for the week so it's like in a week I have like um, certain things I've got to do so I've got a full snatch three times I aim for a teenager three times or including variations like from the block but full lift, full sound, full clean, three times each, do the powers at least twice each and then it's like, so like, uh, I kind of think, last Monday I was meant to do such and clean the blocks in the morning and got there and I was like, no, my body's not having this. I'll do powers this morning and I'll do, you know, I'll make sure I get that in at some other point in the week so I just do whatever my body lets me so I have like an aim of everything I'm going to get done in the week but it gets done when it gets done rather than when a bit of paper says to do it so that instead of breaking myself to get something done when I'm not able, it's like just being sensible really. But 
it takes a long time, I think, to learn how to do that and how to listen to your body and actually know when to do it or when not to do it. No, it's cool. I think I, think I see this. I think the discipline that it takes must be pretty immense. Um, 